I am rolling through Prineville, Oregon. I haven't been up in this part of Oregon in probably about 12 years. And back then it was just coming through as a tourist. Today, I'm finally on my way to a real adventure. So this is going to become a solo backcountry adventure, but for the first couple of days, I'm actually meeting up with a bunch of my cousins from all over the West Coast, Washington, Idaho, California. I'll be meeting up with my cousins and camping for a few days uh, alongside the river out in sort of the Northeastern Oregon backcountry. After that, I'll be headed off on to uh, solo adventure to some other interesting places. When the trip was planned, there was no way to know that this weekend is looking like it's going to be record heat in Oregon. It's only the end of June, and at the end of June you could just as easily run into rain. I'm not very fond of being out in the heat, and uh, I lose motivation real quick to like do stuff. <laughs> Set up cameras, drive. So I think it's gonna be a long week. We'll see how it goes. to even get out and set up a camera. I can't imagine biking in this heat. Not off pavement for long before I'm already stumbling upon some abandoned homesteads which are now within the National Forest. Alright, I think I've found the trail to the campsite. Our goal was to camp along the river. We'll see if David and Chris have scored us something nice. Most of my cousins have already arrived at what must be one of the prettiest campsites I've ever encountered, with a charming wild river winding through dramatic rocky hills.
finally, Craig makes his arrival, and no, I'm not feeling out of place at all. High heat and drought conditions have triggered a statewide campfire ban much earlier in the year than usual, but propane burning is still allowed, so we're able to enjoy a little evening ambiance as we catch up. Before it gets any hotter, I want to walk back up the road and check out something I noticed on the way in. I'm not exactly sure what this little underground structure was originally. My guess is that there was a homestead here at one point, and this may have been a root cellar, though I've also heard of structures like this actually being used for habitation. Some additional clues that someone used to live here are these old, overgrown fruit trees. I can't quite tell if they're apple or pear. They're definitely not native and had to have been planted by whoever lived here ages ago. So it's Saturday afternoon, it's about 100 degrees out here. This has pretty much been our afternoon, <laughs> sitting around in the shade, catching up, occasionally getting wet in the river. After dinner, it's finally cooled down enough to be a little active, and our cornhole tournament carries on into the night. Five, five zero, zero, four, four, five. Slide like that to knock him over. Clearly. Yeah! 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 I'm gonna head off towards the next leg of my voyage and my cousin Craig is actually gonna join me for this for the next day and for tonight before he heads back to Idaho tomorrow. It's Monday morning and my cousin Craig and I are not camped anywhere near where we planned to be last night. Let me get some coffee going and I'll tell you how we ended up here. I'm a fan of cowboy coffee. The simplicity of it appeals to me. There are no moving parts, no concerns about assembling, cleaning, or losing multiple components. I just bring my water to a boil, put in some coffee, and let that simmer for a couple of minutes. A touch of cold water at the end supposedly helps the ground settle and I do generally get a clean, grit-free cup of coffee with a rich, well-rounded flavor. Okay, for something totally improvised, I guess ultimately this isn't a terrible campsite. Well, it has been a long, hot, grueling day. A number of things didn't go quite according to plan. 
but uh, we improvised and we improvised again and uh, we ended up in uh, part of a national forest we had no intention of being. I don't even have downloaded maps for it. But we drove up a road and took another road and took a side road off of a side road. Just saw a coyote run across the road a little further up. Oh, boy. Maybe you need to chase down one of those little cabs. Come on, fellas. Get out of the way here. Up the hill. There you go. disused campsite in this lovely little meadow here and uh, it's quiet it's peaceful and we've got a place to sleep after this long hot day that didn't go according to plan I don't even feel like cooking but I have raw meat in the fridge I need to consume so I'm throwing together sort of a turkey burger topped with grilled mushrooms and onions and melted cheese and Craig and I will enjoy a final evening around the campfire nice <laughs> Fade to black. <laughs> Earlier this afternoon, we made a steep descent out of a completely different mountain range, and that's when things started going a bit sideways. So to get to where I wanted to go tonight, we had to come all the way back down to the next valley floor drive a little ways along the valley and then go back up into the mountains because there's only one way into that area. I think this is going to be pretty cool up here if we can get up in here. The locals that we talked to were not 100% sure. deer and two fawns romping through the grass there. After making our way up the valley a bit, we found the National Forest Road that leads back up into the mountains. It's really annoying because this road goes up to National Forest Land. I'm pretty sure it's a National Forest Road. I think it's got a National Forest Road public land up in there. It's ridiculous. I mean, it's one thing if you can't, you know, go into where they're actually logging, but you gotta let us get through. We are back on pavement. We reassessed, we took a look at the maps, looked at nearby areas of public lands, found an area that looked like it's a little more recreation oriented. So we are going to buzz in that direction as quickly as we can. When we got started this morning, I wasn't at all concerned about my planned campsite. That looked like a no-brainer, a forest service road up to a lake in the National Forest. Getting to that road from Saturday night's campsite was actually my bigger concern. The route I had plotted over the mountains definitely looked risky, but also looked like it could be epic if we could get up there. This is really just some amazingly beautiful country. I've never been in this part of the state before in my entire life. And uh, just really interesting mix of uh, mountains and sparse forests and just this gorgeous river that we camped along the last couple of days. As we climb up out of the river valley where we camped with all my cousins, we're treated to panoramic vistas spanning seemingly endless wilderness.
had to make a few adjustments to the route as we go, but so far we're able to keep moving in the right direction towards the mountain pass. Now I don't know for sure if this road is going to go through or not. It looked like it would. I'm hoping it does because I think it's going to be pretty cool at the top. Craig's truck is heating up a little bit, mostly his transmission. And so we've stopped to sort of let it cool down a little ways and see uh, if that gets a little better. We have maybe a mile or two left to get to the top, but we've got a lot of vertical climb yet to do. So uh, we'll just keep an eye on temps. We have made it to the top, and I am thrilled. What a spectacular drive up to this remarkable peak, and what an incredible view. We won't be crossing over into that range, but I definitely hear those mountains calling me. Looks amazing over there. I'll have to save that for next time. How's it going? Great. Good, how are you? Yeah, it's much cooler up here. Awesome. Amazing up here. What a view. It is. We watched you and Jason yep. this morning. Yeah, we're just out for an afternoon. We thought we'd get up a little higher elevation, be a little cooler. Is it hot down in the city, down in yeah, the valley? Yeah. So you can see, maybe you can see. So I was originally, I was thinking to go down. Running into fellow explorers who are local to the area is a great opportunity to double check the route I have planned in the area where I'm hoping to make camp. I'm staying on the hottest I'm, day of the I'm year. Driving to, I'm driving to a hotel. <laughs> After a pleasant chat, Roy and Jen continue on their way. See ya! Even though the hours ahead will soon lead us to some frustrations and yet more rerouting, for the moment I am so happy we were able to find our way up and over this mountain range and thoroughly enjoyed the gorgeous drive we experienced in the process. I guess it wouldn't be an adventure if everything went perfectly, and the things that do go wrong just make the successes seem that much sweeter. I have to remind myself to relish these moments, because high points like these are what carry you through the low points when things don't go right. This right here is a perfect example that sometimes luck is on your side. Turns out that had we come up here one week earlier, this chunk of snow would still have been blocking the route. It was cleared just days ago. You win some and you lose some, but you do win some. Well, that was awesome. 
We'd only seen one other vehicle up here all day. The second truck we saw were subscribers to the channel. And uh, they're local to the area. Super, super helpful. Roy's knowledge of the area saved us from a couple of significant missteps in my route planning. And he did also warn me that the area we were headed for might be gated due to logging operations. So it wasn't a total surprise when it happened. So thank you so much, Roy and Jen. Really appreciate it. Really nice to meet you. Love the pups too. And so we find ourselves in this random meadow in this random national forest. And I guess I can't complain. We had ourselves a nice little adventure. We found a perfectly nice place to camp. Today, Craig is heading back to Idaho and I am gonna set off across a series of national forest lands. Just gonna slowly explore my way back towards home over the next few days. Well, Craig is off on his way back to Idaho and I am starting my journey westward. I've got a few miles of highway driving to do to sort of hook back up to the route that I had originally planned that got sort of screwed up with yesterday's uh, gated fiasco. So it is 10 a.m. Monday. I've just gotten back off pavement. I don't know how long it will take me to get back onto pavement. I've got a spot planned where uh, I'll jump out of the National Forest and go down to get some gas and I'll do a short stint on the highway. But I really don't know how long it's gonna take me to get my way there. It just sort of depends on what I find along the way. Pretty densely forested here, but I think that uh, along the route on the way back I will end up in some treeless areas and some areas where the there's some forest but less dense. Should be an interesting mix of ecosystems I think. not just an abandoned cabin, but a whole little ghost town. These old buildings are sitting on private land, so I can only look at them from the road, but what a perfect little scene in this Old West Valley. As I climb westward into the hills above the ghost town, a break in the trees reveals a glimpse back towards where I came from, and, looking carefully, I can actually see the rough mountain pass we traversed yesterday. You can just barely see that shelf road cut into the slope, right there. After getting up into the hills above that uh, little ghost town, it's pretty much just been all driving through the forest, pretty densely forested. It reminds me of driving around through the forests of Western Oregon, just sort of a nice, plain, easy gravel road, lots and lots of trees. It's just uh, different varieties of trees. And it's lovely, and you know, on a hot day, you can't complain about having some shade. But um, I kind of wouldn't mind getting into some areas where I can actually see what's out there. This little two-track was already a derivation from my planned route that didn't go through earlier. In the process of trying to quickly improvise on the fly, it looked like this trail would get me back on track, but it randomly came to an end with no room to turn around. Unfortunately, this isn't the first time this has happened this morning, and I'm getting a little concerned about how much fuel I've been burning backtracking on roads that don't pan out. I'm still a long, long ways from where I planned to buy gas. Now that is what 
I'm talking about. That looks a little more compelling. Now you can't get up into that mountain range from this side and have to wrap around the back. I was planning on sort of coming behind that mountain range from the other direction on the route that I was on. I've now got a full tank of gas and I'm heading up into that mountain range from the opposite side of what I just showed you. I think this road here is going to follow a creek and I'm curious to see I gave him some water, but he wasn't thirsty. I realize he's all wet. I think there's a little creek down there someplace. So he must not be thirsty, but he does seem to be lost. I'm not sure what to do. You want to go for a ride a little bit? We'll see if we can find your people. Well, he wasn't thirsty, but he definitely was whiny and feeling lost, I think. He was super willing to hop in the truck. There were some people back there. I'm gonna drop back down and see if by chance he's their dog. And if not, then we'll go further up the road and see if he came down the road from someone. It's okay, you're all right, buddy. I had to move a bunch of stuff out of the back seat into the canopy to make a space for that big guy. Oh, that is a big dog. <laughs> Some of you say I should get a dog, but uh, it's got to be a lot smaller than that. All right, oh, you all right? You good? He doesn't have a tag, so there's no way to call someone or even know what his name is. Oh. Does the air conditioning feel pretty good? Get that AC on you. Let's see if we can turn that up a little more. Those people were just up here. I see their car. Are you all missing a dog by chance? No. Oh, oh no. Look like? Oh, that's a guy from uh, Seneca. Is that the big dog? He's a huge dog. Yeah, that's, oh, yeah. yeah, we know his dog He's is. right down there. Okay. Down there? Uh, he was up there, he was just wandering around on the on the road looking very <laughs> frightened. No. He hopped right in the truck and was like... <laughs> but I, th I thought I'd come check with you guys, then I thought I would drive further up the road and see if he came from someone yeah, up there. Yeah, we'll wait. Actually, we'll follow you to make sure he gets home. If not, he lives next door to me. Oh, he does? Yeah. Okay. So he went down the motor <laughs> went down that road, but we'll just follow you to make sure he gets down there. Okay. So those people in that car, it's not their dog, but <laughs> they know the owner and they saw him go up this way. So it's all good. It's all good, huh, buddy? Deer out there. driven man at least a mile maybe more from where I found him still haven't found the owner those people are following me so that uh, if we don't find the owner they can take the dog home so all's well that ends well we found the dog's owner I would say it was a good two miles up the road so that dog uh, really went for a run The dog's owner told me that this road ends, and on the map it looked like it made a loop. I was going to make this loop and follow the creek, see if there were any campsites along here. Um, but uh, the road is just blocked by dead trees. There was clearly a fire here a few years ago, and there are still downed trees everywhere. Nah, not worth it. There is a cute little creek here. I did see one campsite on my way up in here, and it 
could be an option, but we're still down at pretty low elevation and it's really hot. So I think what I'm gonna do is, since it's only, it's 3.30, Well, I don't think I'm gonna camp here. I haven't gained very much elevation and it is really hot. But this is a nice little campsite that I could come back to if I don't find anything else. Like there's a cute little creek here and uh, this lovely little meadow. I suspect it's probably gonna be kind of buggy, but for now it's really hot. I'm just gonna get wet a little bit. I've been sweating all day long. much better. I'm now driving up what appears on the map to be the highest elevation road in this area in hopes of maybe finding a campsite where it'll be a little less hot. The temperature is very noticeably decreasing as I climb. The road terminated at a trailhead, but I seem to have come way up the mountain. about 20 degrees cooler up here than it was down below. We'll have to see what the elevation is. What an unbelievable view. Seven thousand nine hundred and seventy feet up there at that trailhead. Just shy of eight thousand feet. I think that's now the highest I've ever driven. My previous record was yesterday at seven thousand two hundred feet. There aren't any campsites up here at the top, so I'm gonna drop back down a bit to find a spot for the night. Hopefully I can at least get into some shade and if I can get near one of the creeks flowing down the mountain, all the better. I 
I guess this will have to make do for tonight. There's something to be said for perseverance, but there can also be wisdom in knowing when to let go and try something else instead. I'm so glad I dropped my original plan and found myself here tonight. It's been a long day. I got up about 5.30 this morning and uh, still a little bit of light in the sky, but uh, it's the middle of summer, so it's actually starting to get pretty late. I think I'm gonna get ready for bed and lay down, do some reading, and uh, just see if I can get a solid night's sleep. Good night. Well, that was definitely the uh, coldest night and it's the chilliest morning so far of the trip. I was plenty warm in my summer sleeping bag. It was uh, definitely wasn't that cold, but uh, just pleasantly less hot than it has been. Alright, uh, everything's packed up, it's about 7.30 in the morning, had breakfast, coffee, and uh, tidied up some things that got a little bit disarrayed when uh, I had to get Fred the dog into the back seat yesterday. This part of the trip, I'm actually hoping to find some historical sites as I go. I did a little bit of research on this area and have pinpointed some spots where I think it's possible I could possibly find 
some old cabins or homesteads, ruins, something like that. So I've stopped here at the first spot that I had marked. In satellite imagery, it looked like there was a road here, but um, on my maps, uh, it definitely indicates that this is not technically a road. Uh, it doesn't have a road number. It doesn't show up on the Forest Service map as a road. So even though I can see that people have driven up here, I'm, I'm not going to drive up it. The, uh, the spot that I have in mind, and I think maybe I can see something up there, uh, is not very far. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to walk it. It's early in the morning. It's already getting warm, but it's not too, too hot yet. You got to respect the rules when you're out in the national forest, but you definitely can see that there was a road here. And actually, as it turns out, as I'm looking at the map data again, this was actually a rail bed. There was a railroad that went through here at some point. So anyway, let's, uh, let's hike out there and, and see if I was right about this spot. Bingo. Well, that's really cool. I'm really glad that uh, the first one panned out. Uh, that's encouraging for us to come for the rest of the day, but even if I find nothing else, I'm happy that I found at least one thing. Check that one off the list and let's get back to the truck. While the camera, of course, does not do it justice, the stretch of road is about the steepest, gnarliest thing I've encountered on this entire trip. It's the kind of trail that would require maintaining some speed and momentum in the Subaru, but I've shifted the truck into low range to see if I can just slowly crawl up. If I were to try something like that in the Forester, I would have had to use a lot more speed and momentum. Wheels would have been spinning and I'm not 100% sure that I'd be able to get up that or at least be able to get up it without breaking something. Especially that last little bit right at the end. I had to even throw the GoPro down just to pay attention to what I was doing and have both hands on the wheel. But that was impressive. It just crawled right up. forest is quite a bit less dense than where it was yesterday so it's nice you can see through it uh, it's just a little more pleasant to drive through you get some glimpses of views and I love how it's broken up by these beautiful green meadows every now and then really really beautiful country now we're coming up on another spot that I had marked as maybe uh, being a historical site I'm on a little bit more of a main road now so it could be that whatever was there is long gone because probably a, a lot of people travel this road. Yeah, there's kind of a wide spot here. It's kind of a junction of a couple of roads, but I don't see any traces of whatever might have been here before, if my research was even correct. realize I think I can smell smoke and the light 
has sort of a slightly orange haze to it. So yeah, that is definitely a fire burning over there. It looks like it must have started very recently. It looks pretty small, uh, not very far away. It's not on my route. I'm definitely not in danger here. I have no cell service, but um, I'm using my satellite communicator to try and send a message to uh, a family member in order to have them call uh, Malheur National Forest and give them the coordinates of where I am and let them know that there's a fire that started. You know, it's a perfectly clear blue sky. I'm sure that from down the hill you can see that smoke for miles. So I hope somebody already knows about it, but I didn't want to just ignore it. I just got this Garmin a couple of months ago. I've been using it just to send, you know, um, status updates basically that I'm okay. This is the first time I've actually tried to send a custom message. Okay, well, I've done what I can. Uh, hopefully they can get a crew onto that soon so it doesn't spread. I didn't know there were wild horses in this part of the state, but it turns out there are a few hundred of them populating these remote hills and forests. gained some distance from that fire, but can still see the smoke rising up. And I've stirred up some horses, much closer this time. This little segment of the drive has just been super charming with this sort of prairie and the horses and this tiny little road winding through the pines. It's really cool. And I would have filmed more of it, but it's just Totally hot outside. I mean, it is unbearable. I'm doing everything I can to not be outside. Sorry. My route has been taking me along treeless ridge lines divided by forested valleys. There's some more horses. This is some pretty remote, primitive road. It's definitely a road on the map, but there's not much road there. Some of today I was on some pretty main looking Forest Service roads and this is kind of just the opposite. But everything is going through, we're making progress, so that's encouraging. This is the kind of little road that I expect to suddenly come to an end or be blocked by a huge tree that no one has cleared. No, 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 no. Oh. Well, 
and clearing that thing or that one or the one beyond or the one beyond or the one beyond blocked routes are certainly nothing new for me but it is particularly disheartening today as it's going to take some significant backtracking in order to reroute back through a bunch of gates and I'm going to have to completely change my plan, I think, once again. To avoid what looks to be a massive amount of backtracking, I've decided to just completely change my plan again. I found a road that leads towards a tiny town I had no intention of being anywhere near, but I know there's gas there. It looks like it could be interesting enough topography that it may prove enjoyable, even if it's not what I originally had in mind. So my new plan is to find my way down to that little town, top up the gas tank, and then reassess where to go next. This road is just brutal. And it's so hot outside. It's gotta be well over 100 out there. Of course, this morning when it was cooler, I was on nice smooth roads. Now, when I'd like to go a little faster, I'm, I'm creeping at, I don't know, three miles an hour. This is the only way out without completely backtracking. And, oh wait, I'm already, I'm already off the road. Oh boy, this is not looking promising. Wait, does that veer back around? No, oh my God. Okay, well, this is gorgeous out here. But this is getting a little frustrating. I don't know if you can see that. There's the road I was gonna be on. It shows a nice main road like that. I accidentally veered off this way. I don't know if you can see it's that road over there. And I came back and trying to get back on the main road, I actually ended up on that other road over there. So the main road, the quote unquote main road goes right up the middle there, but there is one 100% absolutely not a road. The two roads that are here both appear on the map to be dead-end spurs. It's certainly possible that the map data is a little off. I've seen that a number of times on this trip, but this road is so rocky and slow that I really don't want to trudge down it for another half hour, only to discover I have to turn around and trudge all the way back up. So I found some shade, took a break to collect myself, and calmly re-examined the map with fresh eyes. As a result, I spotted a potential route I had completely overlooked, which required only minimal backtracking. It looks promising, and I think it will eventually hook me back up to my original route westward. So I've now reconnected with my originally planned route. And it is insanely hot. Was not lucky that the uh, weekend that I was already gonna be out this way turned out to be like the hottest weekend of the year in all of Oregon. Well, onward. It's 3.30 and somehow I've only used a quarter of a tank all day long in all of that driving. Yesterday, I got worried about gas. I didn't want to continue that route because I didn't think I would get through. It seemed like I went down much faster. It's weird. I mean, I'm happy. I'm happy I've still got three quarters of a tank plus my extra fuel because I think I'm going to need every bit of it to get through my route and back to Prineville, which I think is the next possible gas. And that's a long ways away. As I'm back on track here, I've come upon another potential homestead site I had flagged. I think I see some ruins, 
but the spur to get there is washed out and it's simply way too hot to hike over. I've still got a few more sites marked. Maybe I can get a little closer to the next one. Now this is a little more comfortable hike in 100 degree weather. I've stumbled upon a campground and it feels like the right moment to stop for the day. I just hope I can find a vacant space that's not too close to any neighbors. Yeah, I don't think anyone will be disturbing me tonight. Well, <laughs> I think I started about 7.30 this morning. It's almost 5.30 now. I've pretty much been driving all day. Since it's so unbelievably hot, I was planning to just keep driving until the sun got much, much lower. But that's gonna put it into like nine o'clock maybe. And I'm beat. I ran across this campground that is in the shade. It's along a creek and there is nobody here. Eight bucks a night sounds like a bargain. All right, I'm not gonna dilly-dally. First order of business is to get wet in that creek. <laughs> well, it's not a ton of water, but uh, it's probably more water than I would have found if I would kept driving for another three hours and ended up somewhere in the hills up there. Uh, I think this is perfect for tonight. <laughs> I wasn't sure at first if this was a beaver dam or just a random snag, but the branches do have teeth marks on them. Oh, that's much better. I tell you what, I just lay down in that creek like you would do in a hot bathtub in the middle of winter and just let it cool me down. Being uh, with all my cotton clothes soaked hopefully will keep me cool for a while. Really simple dinner tonight. I just fried up a steak in the carbon steel pan and cut an avocado in half and made a little vinaigrette inside of it. That's all I've got in me for tonight for cooking. a.m. It's wonderfully chilly. Ah. Let's get some coffee made, get camp packed up, and hit the road before it gets hot. Those coyotes are not far at all. I'm not out of gas yet, but I don't think I have enough in the tank to get me all the way to Prineville. So I'm gonna put in my extra fuel now during the chilly morning hours so I won't have to mess with it later under a blazing sun in the heat of the day. The safety siphon allows me to bypass the annoying eco spouts. Super inexpensive bit of gear that makes refueling fast and easy. It just sucks the gas right out of there. That works so well. All right, let's get out of here.
down here on the road So many men with talent Only a few have the soul As I'm looking at My face in one I wonder If I am alone Just searching for a peace of mind And I'm just a traveler Passing through for time Just a traveler passing through for time. Well, I know that I'm born with my failures and trials. No, I'm born in this emptiness inside. Maybe I'm no better than the man who pays a dollar for a fee. No different than the ones who I run all day Well, I'm just searching for a peace of mind And I'm just a traveler Passing through for time That was a fun and pretty little drive. I've now found my way back out onto a little bit more of a primary gravel road, but I think I'm getting close to the end of this expedition. been a trip with a lot of things that didn't go quite as planned and a lot more heat than I would have preferred but uh, really epic enjoyable experience now it's time to air up and head home <laughs>